Hello, this is Ryan with Grind Knife Sharpening. We're going to go over some uh, sharpening using the new Tradesman Edge Apex. Uh, I'll start by telling you a little bit about my setup and uh, go over some of the details about its specific use, its intended use, you know, some of its capabilities, and uh, with a little bit of an extra emphasis on the resin bonded diamond. Uh, grinding wheels and you know how they're different from most of the other wheels uh, currently out there their lifespan you know and we'll look at some of their performance uh, we'll do a sharpening kind of chopped up so we can stop and and hopefully see under the microscope what things are going to look like and keep going from there see what we can come up with so first I'll kind of go over some of the set up and I'll talk about some of the features while we're doing the sharpening uh, dispel some of the myths about the Tradesman Apex uh, because there's a lot of stuff going on that's not a wet grinder uh, so on and so forth well that's uh, certainly not true we've got variable speed we got some water I'm gonna show you how to set that up first before we start we've got some sponge trays and you just pour in a little bit of water you don't need a ton but the wetter it is the less uh, dust you deal with so we got the sponge tray on both sides so we're going to go ahead and give it a little bit of water. Uh, these trays you can remove easily uh, so that you don't have to deal with a lot of um, just your wheels sitting in, uh, the, in the water. There's an aluminum tray that slides side to side for dropping your trays quickly and as it's balanced in the center it will hold both trays up at the same time so we're going to slide it all the way over to the right slide this tray which has a little more water in it than needed um, put that one in slide the other one all the way over we will drop this tray uh, slide it halfway back there we go now we're balanced. Uh, we got water running on our wheels. Uh, you can see they, they come out wet from dry. You can see the shiny. Uh, it doesn't take a lot of water to uh, do the, your cooling and your dust reduction. Uh, so that's, that's very important. Also, I have my machine set up with dual belt over wheels. These can just slide to where you need them. They're firm enough if you're doing sharpening. They're, they're, they're not stock removal grinders. You're not bearing into them. But for sharpening purposes, they're not going to move if you're using sharpening pressure. Uh, you can bring them all the way forward or remove your support bar if you want to use slack belt on the back. Or if you want to move your platens, there's mounting holes on the back. You can move your platens back there. Um, they're both independently movable. You can adjust the tightness with six screws on the inside I showed on the setup video if you really want to lock those down. So we've got our water troughs set up. So next is um, going to be setting your support bar distance so you can use the calculator online that's provided. Um, the graduations are marked here. I like to sharpen at 70 millimeters. You measure from the front of this support bracket. There we got 70 on this side. We got 70 on this side, so that I already have set up. Most of your sharpening for standard size knives can be done at 70 millimeters. You can work on that. It can be changed um, for bigger knives or smaller knives. Um, I like to work with two or three main support bar distances because that just speeds up your processing efficiency. One other thing you're gonna see in this video is I have a prototype stropping machine which is a one wheel. This isn't available for purchase yet. It's, a, it's just a prototype. It should be available around 2025. We're gonna be running a stropping wheel. Now, entirely possible to do this all on the Apex, but I do production sharpening and so speed for me is most important. So I will have and use a dedicated stropping machine because that is important to me. You can easily, in seconds, you drop this, you throw your stropping belt onto this belt over system and you keep going. I have been doing that up until a couple of days ago when I got this machine. It adds seconds of time and those seconds are valuable to me. So I 
focus on using uh, that additional machine. So I'll demonstrate that, but the process, the only difference would be stopping, dropping the wheel, giving it a second or two to dry off, and then putting your leather belt on and continuing with your stropping steps. Everything on this machine was set up identically to this one. You can still see we're at 70. Um, and so we're gonna proceed with jigging up a knife. Um, definitely designed to be a fixture sharpener. I know there's folks out there using it freehand. That's fine if that's what you wanna do. But we're gonna go over some fixture sharpening. I'm going to use this uh, Dragonfire Gyoto that I have. Um, and we're gonna sharpen it at about 15 degrees. So we're just gonna set it in this clamp right about there we want to be in the ballpark of a projection distance from your clamp to your edge of about 145 millimeters and we're pretty close that's good enough for our purposes today for demonstration we'll get a good edge once we're clamped we come over to sharpening and to make this applicable, these wheels will run on Tormek machines or all of your 10 inch wet grinders uh, that are available, should run on all of them. There is a, inside the wheel, there is a roll pin that interacts with the shaft of, the, shaft of this machine to give it some extra strength when you're running it on a belt. That's fine. That roll pin can be just pulled out with the pliers if you're running it on a Tormek. This machine is variable speed from 200 all the way up to 1,000 RPMs. And so my sweet spot I like to cook at is about 600 RPMs. And so we're gonna demonstrate that today, but we don't necessarily have to run it that fast. We can go down to 200 and sharpen similar speeds to Tormac. Everything just takes just a touch longer because um, we're going at a slower speed. So we're gonna fire this guy up, make sure our trays are set give it some juice and we run there we go you can see the water is kind of spraying off of there so it's definitely a wet grinder so we'll go there we're gonna come in we're gonna see how long it takes us to get our burr pass and I'm sorry if my depth perception is a little off I'm doing this on a head mounted camera uh, so you can see it from the exact same perspective as me so we're gonna come down and touch There you can see the water come off. Okay, two passes back and forth. Now I don't think you're going to be able to see this burr on camera. I'm going to try and make it come out. We'll wipe some of that water out of the way. But you can hear it. There's certainly a burr. We missed a little bit right there. Certainly up at the tip. So we're gonna do one more light pass to get that last little bit. Okay, let's take a look under the microscope that we've got set up here. Hopefully this thing doesn't give me too much trouble. With focusing, I really like the results that we get from this microscope. There, we can see a nice established burr. We'll try to get it in a little better focus. There. Okay. Nice feather burr. You're gonna get that when you're edge trailing. It's not an issue necessarily because this burr is gonna come off real easy. So we'll come back over here. We're gonna do another pass. Getting to the point where you can sharpen in the camera is a little bit challenging. There's a pass, one more pass. Okay, 
the mechanics are a little different, the depth perception's a little different, everything's just a little bit off. So we have a clear established burr. It's very easy to see and feel. I'll show it to you one more time under the microscope because this is the opposite side of the knife, but the burr is up right now. The water is giving me a little bit of a... Here we go. We can see our burr. So now we step over, resin bond wheels, since your abrasive is buried in resin, you have a little bit different uh, grit performance than you do on uh, electro wheels. Um, you can do bigger steps in your grit progression. So here we're gonna go straight from 100 grit to 1000 grit resin bond diamond. We're gonna spend a little bit of time here, but not much. 1000 grit resin bond diamond wet The sponges in contact with the wheels do a pretty good job of keeping your grit cleaned and scrubbed off your wheels if you have a rubber rust eraser or like a rubber belt conditioning stick, you can use those to help clean up your wheels if they start looking a little gummy over time. I haven't plugged one up to a point where it stops cutting, but I do like to keep them looking nice with that dressing stick. So at this point, one more light pass. One more light pass. Okay, let's dry this off and take a look under our microscope what a thousand grit pass looks like. There we have it. We have removed essentially all of those hundred grit scratches in just a couple of seconds. So there's no need for a tighter grip progression than that. You know, some of those, that's water droplets and stuff, but you know, there's no need for a tighter grip progression. So now what we're gonna do, we're gonna shut this guy off. We're gonna come over to our stropping machine. Turn that guy on. More details on this machine to come. It is set up a little differently. It does do a few things differently. Um, Let's dry this off before we start stropping. So, I like to use, your polishing compound doesn't matter a whole lot. I like to use Japanese blue. Works well for me. So we're gonna do Japanese blue, just a little bit. We're gonna do a couple of quick passes on the leather. Not a lot of pressure, not a lot of speed. Now I'm doing this slower than production speed to demonstrate for you guys and just stopping to take pictures. This process for most knives is coming in for me at about 50 seconds. Now if they need thinned, if we got to use the belt over wheel attachments and do some thinning, stuff like that, things take a little longer, but that's a different process anyways. So let's take a peek here. I expect to see some compound residue on the edge, but we should get an idea of what our stropped edge looks like. There we go. Okay. Let's focus. Okay, so there we can see some particles, and that's, that's just stropping compound. This is the reason I like blue. If you just take your towel and you give blue a gentle quick swipe, unlike some of the greens or some of the other compounds, they can really be kind of fussy. It just cleans right off. No alcohol, no water, no nothing. There we got a nice polished edge. Burr is removed. We've got some bite. 
we'll see if we can get some of that reflection in the edge that's really hard to get to show up on camera I'm not a videographer by any means uh, so if anybody's got some tips on how to make that show up in the camera oh there we get some of it nice polished edge and that will cut well so those are some image images comparable to the post I made the other day and you know I look forward to seeing what you guys have to say have a great day.